Continuing Helen Waddell's translations of the Desert Fathers with the signs of the Fathers. We are in Book 4 of Self-Restraint. Book 5 is a type of self-restraint, but uh, certain brethren being minded to go from Skeet to Abbey Antony went aboard a ship that they might go to him, and they found in that same ship an old man who likewise was minded to go to Antony, but the brethren did not know him. As they sat in the ship, they talked with one another about the sayings of the fathers, and about the scriptures, and again about the work they did with their hands. But the old man held his peace through all. Now, the word in the Bible for uh, the work that they say Jesus did um, was actually uh, lower in society word than carpenter. It was basically they worked with their hands however they were hired. Um, but the old man held his peace through all. When they reached the harbor, they perceived that the old man also was on his way to the abbot Antony. And when they had come to him, the abbot Antony said to them, Ye found a good companion for your journey in this old man. And he also said to the old man, Thou didst find good brethren to company thee, father. Then said the old man, Indeed, they be good, but their house hath no door. Whosoever will may enter into the stable and loose the donkey. Now he said this because whatsoever came into their hearts, that they spoke with their mouths too. The abbot Daniel said of the abbot Arsenius that he would spend the night in vigil all the night. Through he walked, and when toward morning he craved for very nature to sleep, he would say to sleep, Come thou ill servant, and would snatch a little sleep, sitting, and straight away would rise up. And, no, that's not the right approach. One, sleep is a divine gift that you can turn towards your spiritual practice. Three, the abbot Arsenius said, It sufficeth a monk if he sleep for one hour, that is, if he be a fighter. Four, the abbot Daniel said of him, For so many years did he live with us, and we gave him a scant portion of food in the year, and every time we would come to visit him, it was ourselves that ate it. 5. He said again that not more than once a year did he change the water for steeping the palm leaves, but only added to it. And he would make a plate of those palm leaves and stitch it until the sixth hour. The fathers asked him once why he did not change the palm water, because it stank. And he said to them, For the incense and the fragrance of the perfumes that I used in the world, needs must I use this stench now. And no, you don't need to punish yourself for enjoying the good things of the world. Even if they're bad things, you don't need to um, do harmful stuff to yourself. Um, you can do good deeds to make up for mistakes you made in the past, sure, but... I want to be disgusting because I enjoyed myself in life. It's like, yeah, no. <laughs> Eight. At one time, the abbot Agatho was on a journey with his disciples, and one of them found a little bundle of green peas on the road and said to the old man, Father, if thou wilt, I shall lift that. The old man looked at him wonderingly and said, Didst thou put it there? The brother answered, No. And the old man said, How couldst thou wish to lift up that which thou it's not put down. 10. At one time, the same, uh, at one time, the abbot, Achilles, came into the cell of the abbot Isaiah and Skeet, and found him eating, for he had put salt and water in the pot, and seeing that he hid it behind plates of palm leaves, he said to him, Tell me what thou wast eating. He answered, Forgive me, father, for I was cutting palm leaves, and I grew hot. So I dipped a morsel of bread in salt and put it into my mouth, and my throat was parched and the morsel did not go down, that I had put it in my mouth, 
and so I was compelled to pour a little water upon the salt, so that I could swallow it, but forgive me. And the abbot Achilles used to say, Come and see, Isaiah supping broth, and skeet, if thou wouldst sup broth, go down into Egypt. 12. The abbot Benjamin, who was a priest at, in Kala, said that he once came to a certain old man in Skeet and would have given him a little oil. But he said to him, Look, where sitteth the little jar that thou didst bring me three years ago? And just as thou didst set it down, it hath remained. And he heard it and marveled at the manner of life of the old man. 15. At one time, Epiphanius Bishop of Cyprus sent to the abbot Hilarion, asking him and saying, Come that I may see thee before I go forth from the body. And when they had come together and were eating, a portion of fowl was brought them. And the bishop took it and gave to the abbot Hilarion. The old man said to him, Forgive me, father, but from the time that I took this habit, I have eaten naught that hath been killed. Well, you find that that in itself is a violation. But if it's not killed in the uh, scripturally sound way of a scripturally sound source or animal, you know, that sort of thing, um, then you can understand that. But um, these artificial prohibitions amongst people's selves, some people in particular would... Oh, I, I, I can't have, I, I probably won't have visions if I have, eat birds. It's like, no. Um, and Epiphanes said to him, And I, from the time that I had took this habit, have let no man sleep that had aught against me, nor have I slept holding aught against any man. And the old man said to him, Forgive me, for thy way of life is greater than mine. 20. The abbot John of short stature said, once, when I was climbing up the road that leads to Skeet, with palm leaf mats, I saw a camel driver, and he began speaking and arousing me to fury, and I dropped what I was carrying and fled. 21. Said the abbot Isaac, priest at Kila, I know a brother that was harvesting in the field, and was fain to eat an ear of wheat. And he said to the owner of the field, Wilt thou suffer me to eat one ear? And hearing him, he marveled and said to him, Father, the field is thine, and thou dost ask me. So scrupulous was this brother. 22. One of the brethren asked the abbot Isidore, an old man at Skeeth, saying, Wherefore do the devils fear thee so mightily? And the old man said to him, From the time that I was made a monk, I have striven not to suffer anger to mount as far as my throat. 26. They told of the abbot Acarius, that if he were making holiday with the brethren, and a wine was brought, and he drank for the brethren's sake, he set this bond upon himself, that for one cup of wine he would drink no water for a whole day, and the brethren, eager to give him pleasure, would bring him wine, and the old man would take it joyously to torment himself thereafter. But his disciple, knowing the reason, said to the brethren, For God's sake do not give it to him, for he brings under his body with torments thereafter in his cell. And the brethren, when they knew it, gave him wine no more. Well, alcohol hurts some people more than others, right? Um, 27. The abbot Macarius, the elder, used to say to the brethren in Skeet, When Mass is ended in the church, flee, my brothers. And one of the brethren said to him, Father, whither in this solitude? Can we further flee? And he laid his finger upon his mouth, saying, This is what I would have you flee. And so he would go into his cell and shut the door and there sit alone. 28. And again, the abbot Macarius said, If in desiring to rebuke anyone, thou art thyself moved to anger, thou dost satisfy thine own passion, in saving another, lose not thyself. 49. The abbot Hyperchius, yeah, 
the abbot Hypericus said, The monk that cannot master his tongue in time of anger will not be master of the passions of his body at some other time. 51. He said again, It is better to eat flesh and to drink wine than to eat the flesh of the brethren by backbiting them. Now, as much as some things like this may be true, that doesn't mean that, oh, well, it's a smaller sin to do this stuff, so I'm going to unlawfully consume, right? You know, um... 54. Another time, a vessel of wine, the first of the vintage, was brought in, and cups apiece were given to the brethren. And a certain brother coming in, and seeing that they were taking wine, fled into the crypt, and the crypt fell in. And when they heard the noise, they ran and found the brother lying half dead, and began to revile him, saying, Rightly did this befall thee, for thy vain glory. But the abbot cherishing him said, Leave my son alone, he did a good deed. And as the Lord liveth, the crypt shall not be built again in my time, that the world may know that for a cup of wine a crypt fell in skeet. 55. At one time a priest from Skeet went up to visit the bishop of Alexandria, and when he came back to Skeet, the brethren questioned him, How fair is the city? But he answered them, Believe me, my brothers, I saw no man's face there, not even the face of the bishop. And on hearing this they marveled and said, What thinkest thou hath become of all that multitude? And the priest resolved their doubts, saying, I rested away my soul, that I might not look upon the face of man. And the brothers profited by the story and guarded themselves against lifting up their eyes. 56. There once came a certain old man to another old man, and he said to his disciple, Cook us some lentils. And he did so. I prefer the red ones myself. Um, and steep some bread for us. And he steeped it. And they so remained till the sixth hour of the day following, speaking of the things of the Spirit, and again, the old man said to his disciple, Cook us some lentils, my son. He answered, It hath been done since yesterday. And so they arose and ate their food. 61. At one time a brother went to visit his sister that lay ill in the convent. Now she was of the great devotion, and being unwilling ever to see man, or bring her brother into temptation by his coming for her sake into the midst of women, she sent him word, saying, Go, my brother, and pray for me, for by Christ's sake, uh, by Christ's grace, I shall see thee in the kingdom of heaven. 62. Um, it's better to prepare yourself for temptation, right? Because temptation can surprise you if you just avoid life um, and you don't try to fill in with, okay, how am I going to, uh, this area of life, how am I going to indulge in it correctly, right? You know. Uh, 62. A monk met the handmaids of God upon a certain road, and at the sight of them he turned out of the way, and the abbess said to him, Hadst thou been a perfect monk, thou wouldst not have looked so close as to perceive that we were women. 64. A certain brother brought fresh loaves into his cell and invited his elders to table, and when they had eaten a barrel apiece, they stopped. But the brother, knowing the travail of abstinence, began humbly to entreat them, saying, For God's sake, eat this day until ye be filled. And they ate another ten. Behold, therefore, how these that were true monks and sincere in abstinence did eat more than they had need of, for God's sake. 66. An old man had lived long in the desert, and it chanced that a brother came to see him and found him ill, and he washed his face and made him a meal of the things he had brought with him. And when the old man saw it, he said, Indeed, brother, I had forgotten what solace men might have in food. He offered him also a cup of wine, and when he saw it, he wept, saying, I had not thought to drink wine until I died. 68. A certain brother was going out on a journey, and he had his mother with him, and she was old, 
they came to a certain river, and the old woman could not cross it. And her son took off his cloak and wrapped it about his hands, lest he should in any wise touch the body of his mother. And so carrying her, he set her on the other side of the stream. Then said his mother to him, Why didst thou so cover thy hands, my son? He answered, Because the body of a woman is fire. Yeah, no, this messed up. Uh, and even from touching thee came the memory of other women into my soul. Okay. That's, that's, that's where from, but, you know, you gotta distinguish the family that you are, you know, never allowed to marry, and that which you are, and that which you are, and that which you were at the time married to, right?